Good morning. Welcome back to another cloudy day here in eastern North Carolina. It's also a little chilly and somebody's burning something horrible somewhere in the neighborhood. I don't know what it is, but uh, it's a little smoky and stinky. Uh, if you've been wondering where I've been, if you're a regular viewer, last Friday I started coming down with a uh, cold and that rolled right through the weekend of my birthday. And by Sunday or Monday, Monday I was feeling a little better. Basically, I had like a sinus infection thing going on. Blech. So I had this sinus infection thing going. And yeah, just, you just feel terrible when that kind of thing happens. But my Monday, I was feeling a little better. I did a short. Only four of you watched it. I don't know why. Have you guys seen my shorts in the queue and the thing? If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit the bell icon to be notified when I do post up a video, whether it be a short or regular episode. And uh, this way you don't miss a thrilling moment of my adventures in the garden. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so yeah, I've been out basically sick for a week now. And I thought today, I, you know, I'm still a little under the weather. I got a cough that kind of just won't go away. But I'm feeling a little better. The most important thing though is that time is ticking. And, and uh, time, fall is here. The weather's cooling off here in Eastern North Carolina, I don't think we're supposed to see a freeze for at least another two to three weeks. And when we do get a freeze, it's gonna be a light frost. It's gonna be a, you know, it'll dip down probably to freezing uh, late at night, early in the morning kind of thing. And then it'll dip back up to above freezing during the daytime temps. We don't get obviously hard freezes as you would in the um, Northeast or elsewhere in the United States. Again, I'm growing zone 7A right on the coast of Eastern North Carolina. All that being said though, a lot of plants don't like to do well in any sort of cold temperatures. So I wanna sort of get a lot of plants that I still have in pots in the ground, let them get their roots established before that cold hits them and I have to cut them back for the winter. Um, but at least if they have some good sort of good roots in the ground, then uh, hopefully next spring they bounce back and all is well. All that being said, uh, today I'm going to try to be playing catch up. There's a lot of things that need to be, that I haven't done in the past week that I need to get done. And the first thing I'm gonna start doing today is just cleaning up my dahlias a bit. And I'll talk about that when I get there in a minute. And then I'm gonna try to start building out the structure for the flower bed, for the flower garden, the first flower, the first corner of the flower garden. I'm gonna start building out today and I'll explain all that when I get to that. And I think that's all I'm gonna to do today, but let's see how things go. Let's just get to it. Okay, so we're back by the dahlias. And recently I had watched a um, YouTube video. I've been following, uh, I believe it's called Jeff and Heather's Dahlias, something along those lines. Uh, if I remember, I'll leave a link below. And if I don't, then uh, remind me in the comments and I'll add the link. But uh, he's a gentleman in England and he grows primarily dahlias in his garden. He has literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dahlias that he lines his garden with. He has very little lawn. He has beautiful dahlia beds. He has them very organized. Um, he's very analytical with his dahlias, what grows well, what doesn't. He'll only keep dahlia varieties that grow well in his garden, etc., etc., etc. It's it's very, he's a very interesting gentleman. Um, and I ran across him by watching Gardener's World. They did a piece on him. And so I was growing dahlias before that anyways. Uh, I probably inspired again by Gardener's World, Monty Don. Nonetheless, uh, this year I was watching and he's doing something a little different. He was actually cutting his dahlias back by almost half uh, before he pulled them out of the ground. And that, the reason was is to build out stronger tubers. So I think I'm gonna give that a whirl now with my dahlias and we'll see what happens uh, when I pull up the dahlias, which will be an episode that will probably be coming up in the next three weeks or so. So probably in the next three weeks or so, there'll be an episode on me pulling the dahlias out and how I'm gonna store my dahlias for the winter. Now again, I'm growing zone 8A. I do not have to pull the dahlias out of the ground. I can leave them in the ground over the winter, just put a layer of mulch over them and then come springtime, they'll be back doing their thing. Uh, probably late spring, early summer, they'll be back growing out of the ground. But I am gonna pull these guys out this year because eventually, right here in front of the vegetable garden, I wanna make this all hedges. That was, always, that was always sort of the plan, have the hedges grow up to about the fence line. This way it hides the uh, fence 
because I don't like looking at the fence. I'd rather see a nice row of hedges. Uh, so, and the beds have gotten a little overgrown with grasses and weeds. So that's another reason for pulling the dahlias. And the other, re the third reason is I want to put them somewhere out there <laughs> in what will be a uh, proper um, dahlia garden, as it were, just a corner of the flower garden that's going to be all just dahlias of all sorts of shapes, sizes, varieties. But I started my collection here this year and I have more on order already that will be shipping in the spring. And again, they'll all go out into the Dahlia Garden. We'll get to that when that comes. First things first, I like I said, I'm gonna to try to trim these back maybe about halfway, and then I'm going to uh, pull them in the next few weeks. Enough talking, let's get cutting. Also as a side note, some of these Dahlias, uh, for instance, maybe this one right here, which is a Hoi Matey, this one's still doing pretty well. So I might leave this for another week or so, but I'll also probably cut him back I'm also going to have to come out soon and uh, make a note as to what did well this year, what didn't do well. Some of the uh, varieties I have, for instance, this was supposed to be Envy right here off camera that you can't see. Envy did not grow. Uh, I can't remember why, but either way, it didn't grow. So I'm going to have to make a note of that. And I may have already purchased another Envy to try again next year, but we shall see. As I cut these back, a lot of them are going to look really scruffy and bad. But again, this is all for the greater good of them building bigger and stronger tubers, theoretically, so that um, I can later um, divide them. And that's one of the reasons for building better, stronger tubers. All of this will also help make cleaning up in the end a little easier because there's less plant to deal with. So I'll just have to cut the stems back a little bit when I take out the tubers. Here we are at the stake, which denotes, or yeah, is denoting the, uh, basically the south side of the Grand Walkway. We're across from the vegetable garden. The street is out that way. And this is the point where I'm gonna start building out the flower garden from. Now, I think this year, all I'm going to do is this one corner, and that will give me an idea as to how, it, how things are gonna work. If my thoughts and theories are correct as to the way I'm going to build out the garden. And if all that works well, then I can continue stretching out from this point. So essentially what I'm gonna to do today is just a square. Uh, it's gonna eight foot by eight foot right here on the ground. I have, uh, these are one by three by eights. They are unpressure treated. Now, I know a lot of you are going to say, oh, gee, Jay, they're going to rot away really quick, especially in contact with the ground and the wet. Yes, they will. But what is quick? Is quick a week? Is quick two weeks? Is quick three weeks? Is quick three months? Is quick three years? If it's three years, I'll be more than happy. I'll be thrilled. And perhaps they will go a little faster or a little slower. Either way, uh, it will, again, give me an idea as to how this is going to play out. Uh, the reason I went with these boards was for a couple of reasons. One, if it's not pressure treated, I can throw it in the fire pit and burn it. I can throw it in the compost bin and let it rot down. Uh, if it is pressure treated, I can't do that uh, due to the chemicals, etc., etc. Uh, the other reason being is that this is cheaper than metal edging. If I had a million dollars or if I had a million subscribers and had a quarter of a million dollars rolling in a year, I would buy all metal edging. Uh, the metal edging that I started using in the Rose Garden is beautiful. I love it. I want to continue that, but it's very expensive to do everywhere. So for now, what I'm going to do is 
essentially place this on edge. You'll see closer up when I get to that point. I'm gonna stake these into the ground and I'm going to um, lay cardboard in. It's supposed to rain Saturday and Sunday. Today's Friday, it's supposed to rain Saturday and Sunday. So that will help the cardboard uh, get really wet and soft. And then once that starts happening, I can start planting. Uh, once I fill it in with uh, compost and soil, I could start then planting out, which is what I want to do. Right here on the corner, I'm going to uh, put a sprinter boxwood. It's fairly large. Um, and then I'm going to continue with some box along either, si either side. Uh, that will denote the outer limits. And again, we'll, I'll show you that more close up when I get to that point. So uh, the box will get to about four foot, which is roughly about here. And that will act as a windbreak and a defining uh, edge to the flower garden itself. There'll be an entrance down there someplace. There'll be no entrance along the driveway side. It'll be solid hedge. So if you want to come into the flower garden, you'll have to come down into the grand walkway and then into the flower garden. This is a lot for you guys to imagine, but um, you know, just try. And again, if you subscribe to the channel, you can follow along and see what my mad ramblings are all about. The very first thing though I'm gonna do is prep the ground. I just mowed the lawn the other day and uh, it is pretty short. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lay out a couple of boards here so I have my rough eight foot by eight foot area. I'm gonna take the weed whacker, see if I can get this just a little bit shorter to the ground. And then uh, I will start with um, laying out some string so that I then will have my defined edges as it were, put in my boards, and then I'll show you again as we go along. Let me stop talking and get to work. Okay, so I don't know if you can see in the shot here, but I have my two lines ran. Orange line going out towards the street, pink line here going out towards the end of the garden. Now, these boards are gonna sit on top of the ground and to hold them in place, I purchased some of these stakes and I hope that my theory will work out. Essentially, they're metal tent stakes, but they have this hook on the top but it's not bent all the way over. So I'm hopeful that I can bend the hook over. In fact, maybe I'll give it a try now. Oh yeah. Yeah, that should work. Okay, so I can bend the hook over. So essentially the hook will be on the outside of the board and the metal stake will be on the inside. The reason I'm doing that is because hopefully next spring when everything's growing and happy, if I have the metal stake on the outside as I'm trimming with the weed edger, it's gonna hit the metal stake and maybe break. Uh, so, and you'll really kind of notice the stake on the outside. If I put it on the inside, you really won't notice it. So all that being said, let me see if I can line up my first board here. It should be about there. There. <clears throat> Ground is pretty soft. I really don't have to bang this into place. There we go. There. That's not too bad. One done. 87 more to go. I think what I'm going to do, so I have one on each end, and I think maybe I'll just do one in the middle. If I need to come back and adjust this, I will. I can always add in more stakes. This is all an experiment. I've never done anything like this before. It's an eight foot by eight foot bed. And if this doesn't pan out by next spring, or if I need to make adjustments, I will. So here we are, all four boards in place. I cut the grass back as short as I could with the weed whacker. I'm gonna lay cardboard on top of this next. 
you've all seen that a million times before and if not this channel other channels essentially it's just gonna uh, lay flat here on the ground it'll hopefully kill the grass underneath it uh, we are supposed to get some rain like I said over the weekend um, Saturday and Sunday so hopefully that will help soften the cardboard a lot now I do want to start planting next week so what that means is is when I do start planting out various plants many of them will actually I'll have to dig through the cardboard which will be soft by that point because it'll be soaked and then through the grass basically I'll make a hole I'll put the plant in I'll cover up because this is only uh it's one by three so it's actually like three quarters of an inch by two and a half inches or something along those lines so it's not that high uh again several reasons I did this or I'm trying this method is is that if I did a um a garden bed with a cut grass edge the grass here especially during the summertime grows so it grows so quickly i wouldn't be able to keep up with it and the grass would get into the flower beds uh, as is i have where i have like the dahlias and some of the other um, plants that i've planted out over the year raised up and heavily mulched the grass just grows up and over that it doesn't matter the grass is it's it is a weed down here that is just basically uncontrollable there are large sections of the property that i had trees taken out of that are now covering up with grass i never planted any grass seed the grass just does it itself so uh, sorry i'm sitting at a funny angle here so this is what we have today and this is what i'm going to try again this is an eight foot by eight foot bed i will uh, put down the cardboard next week i will probably start planting out which means I will then start uh, filling this up with uh, soil and then I'll mulch all over with wood chips for the uh, foreseeable 